Hi, this is Dr. Parsa Mohebi from Parsa Mohebi Hair Restoration. We have another FUE case. A young gentleman who had a hair transplant before, want to get a more solid hairline. Let's picture and see what we're going to do be doing today. Okay, this is his uh, frontal view. He had another hair transplant. He had some hair, but it's not enough to give him a solid hairline. And that's how he looks in the corner. A few different views. Okay, so let's look at his exam sheet. Six, um, uh, hair is black, uh, straight hair. His donor density is less than average uh, because of his previous hair transplant problem. He has a linear scar on the back because of his strip procedure. Despite of that, he want to proceed with FUE procedure to make it more convenient for him and less pain. He had transplanted hair in front and top areas, crown, he had 90% miniaturization. We're not going to touch the crown. He needs another hair transplant down the road. So th this is, there is an uh, interesting pattern here. There's one spot here that there's no hair growing into it. Uh, everywhere else he has some hair. So he's going to have local anesthesia and then we're going to remove, take a biopsy of that spot to see what's going on. But we're not going to transplant to that, uh, put transplanted hair in that. Man or woman, you see a patch of hair loss somewhere on the scalp. That's most likely a alopecia areata. It's very common. Alopecia areata is a uh, autoimmune disease. The immune system attacks the hair follicles and des destroy them. Patch of hair loss anywhere in the scalp or in the beard. The answer is not hair transplant. You may lose the transplanted hair as well. We're not going to transplant that spot, we're gonna, but we're going to biopsy it now that he's uh, numb to see what the diagnosis is. So this is the area that we're going to transplant. The front is going to be nice and dense, um, and we give him a higher hairline because of this extensive hair loss that he has. And this is the top view. The front is going to be nice and dense. Behind it is going to be a little bit less dense, but that gives him a reasonably solid hairline. So we're already giving him the, the local. Uh, I'm going to check and make sure he's not feeling anything. Do you feel any of these? Do you feel anything sharp? No. None of these? No. The hairline that we designed for him, nice and irregular the way it should be. Is a little bit higher than his native existing hair. This front is going to be nice and dense. We feel comfortable that we put maximum density in front. This is the secondary area that will extend our transplanted hair. Extracting the grafts manually because we have tried different techniques and seems like this is working better. The advantage of manual is that it gives you more flexibility so we know where to change the angle and how you know how quickly we should change. Life views are not always the same, sometimes very easy, no, no, pro, no difficulty removing them. Sometimes they could be a little more challenging. We keep going with extraction of the grafts. And uh, we have done the first pass of extraction and placement. We usually do serial extraction and placement to keep the grafts out of the body for a short period of time. We've done the first pass with over 1,000 grafts. The second pass is still manual. Uh, he has a difficult um, situation with extraction of grafts that manual method is the only one that seems to be working for him. Hair follicles and splay, which is when the hair shafts are going to different directions and it needs need the skin. So for that reason, manual gives us more flexibility of changing the angle and direction as we go forward. It's over. We've done uh, a little bit more than 2,000 grafts and uh, we focus on the front and corners. I can tell you it was not an easy case. It was very challenging. Extraction of grafts in FUE. Sometimes, occasionally, one like out of every 10. Not as easy as the other day. So that was one of those days. So we spent a lot of time figuring out the angles, the curvature, the, the changes in the friction of hair in different areas. But we finally got the number of graphs uh, and we covered the areas that we have to, we had to. This is directed from my camera. You see the front and corners are covered with a reasonable density. We didn't go anywhere on the top. The top area that I was mm, marking as my secondary zone was not filled because we didn't have that many graphs. Yay! One more day is over. This is Dr. Mohebi from Parsa Mohebi Hair Restoration wishing you a happy hair day.